Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today I'm here to ruffle some watercolor feathers by expressing what I think might be an unpopular opinion about watercolor. So let's dive in. Okay, so today I'm talking about an opinion that I personally have about watercolor, and I don't know if it's gonna sit well with other artists, um, beginner, advanced, and all that. So why am I doing this? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I like the punishment in the comments, but I also am doing this because I want to relieve pressure on beginners of not knowing all the technical parts about watercolor, specifically pigments. Okay, so here is my opinion of what I feel. I don't care about pigment information when it comes to choosing my watercolors. There, I said it. Now I'm not saying that it doesn't matter and quality doesn't matter and all the specs don't matter. It's just not something I've ever really paid attention to, nor do I care to pay attention to when I'm buying watercolors. Okay, so if you are a new or a beginner with watercolor, you may have no idea what the heck I'm talking about, but every watercolor is made with a specific pigment or pigments and has certain properties that make it do certain things. And a lot of people find comfort and enjoyment and necessity out of knowing all of that information. I am just not one of them. Okay, so if you were to look at watercolors on the back of almost every single tube, especially the better quality ones, um, I don't think you'll find this on a lot of like the elementary grade watercolors, you will see pigment information. Usually it looks something like PR101 or PB15, and basically that's a code for the pigment that is used, and I think the number that it's listed within the range of color, I don't know. It, it, it means stuff. Most tubes will also tell you that there is a light fast rating, whether a color is transparent or granulating or staining, and all that information is great to know if you really care. But like I said, my unpopular opinion here is to tell you that I, I don't really care and it's not something I really look at when I'm purchasing watercolors. Okay, so why do I feel this way? I don't want you to get mad at me because um, some people will swear up and down that knowing all this information is gonna make you a better artist. It's gonna make you better at color mixing and some people are very, very passionate about it. And I say, that's great. I love that you love information. I just find that my brain kind of tends to feel like it's gonna explode when I look too much at technical stuff and not really just, you know, getting to know colors by playing with them. So when I'm talking about all this, I don't necessarily mean that I don't care about quality materials. I do. I love high quality paints and paper and brushes and all that makes a difference in the long run. Trust me, it does. But when it comes to knowing the pigment information about every single paint that I own, I don't care. I personally believe that the best way to know a color or get to know a color and its properties is to use it. And if you are the type that likes to know the information, please go ahead, do your research, look at all that stuff, enjoy it, go for it. You are not wrong. But like I said, if you're more like me, I think the best way to get to know paints and all of that stuff is to just use them. Now people may argue, well, if I wanna buy a paint, I wanna know everything about it. And yeah, that, that's true um, because a lot of the given names for paint colors, like ultramarine blue or burnt sienna can vary from brand to brand and are kind of different. And what helps you understand what color is actually in the tube is the pigment information. But for me, I'm not buying 10 million different kinds of watercolors. And really, it's kind of like a surprise for me when I use a color, I'd be like, oh, I really like this ultramarine um, compared to this brand. Or, oh, I didn't realize this color was granulating. It might not be my favorite. I personally love the surprise of experimentation with my watercolors and seeing what colors can be made. 
Now, when people argue that it helps you mix colors better, there I feel like nothing will get you more comfortable with mixing colors and learning how to mix than actually just doing it. I don't think you need to make a big spreadsheet about which pigments mix with what to know how, mm, I don't, I don't know. I don't think you need to know all that. I think you should just play around. The best form of information for me is play. So I highly recommend that you just do it, write it down, which colors you have, which brand you have, and then just play around, see how things mix together. That's how I do it. I've never been a research-oriented type of person who likes to know all the facts about things. I just like to get in there and do it. So that is my opinion about watercolors. And like I said, the reason why I'm making this video today is to maybe ruffle some feathers, get a fun little debate, or just kind of share our opinions on this topic in the comments but also to let others know who are beginners and who are more like me that if you don't know all the technical stuff about watercolors and certain brands and how they're made and pigment information, it's okay. The best way you will learn how to paint with watercolor and be good at it is by just playing and practicing. That is my belief. So whether you agree with me or not, that's just it. The only thing I will say, which I did mention, is quality does matter. I don't think you need the highest quality of watercolors to paint something beautiful. I have done a couple videos where I have used dollar store watercolors and they were, let's just say, they were garbage. But I created something with them. I learned new techniques with them. I learned how to manipulate uh, watercolors and paints and supplies that not necessarily are the most forgiving and easy to work with, but it's still something I learned and a skill that I developed, learning to work with different mediums, different qualities of supplies. So I think there is benefit to using all types of materials. So whether you're starting with a dollar store palette or an elementary school level palette or student grade, or you're getting right into the good stuff, into the professional stuff, I think there is something to be learned at all of those steps. So. The whole point of this is to relieve the pressure that if you are starting out and a lot of this seems intimidating to you, I don't think you need to know much about it unless you want to, but it's not a necessity. The best way to get better is to just play. So that's my video for today. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I would like to hear what you have to say. I know people are very passionate about this, but I'd love to hear your opinion and how you approach learning watercolor and all of that good stuff. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in our next video. Have a great day guys. Bye.